Sai Ram to all of you. By Swami's grace, the youth of Central District have been conducting these satsangs regularly. We have been privileged to have speakers who have had the good fortune of being in direct and clear contact with Bhagwan. Continuing with this, we are joined today by Brother Rishi Seth. Now I hand you over to the youth team. Om Shri Sai Ram My humble pranams at the divine lotus feet of our beloved Bhagwan Shri Sakti Sai Baba and a loving Sai Ram to all the viewers of this program a warm welcome to my journey with Sai It is a great joy to inform you all that today amongst us we have brother Rishi Seth It is my privilege and pleasure to welcome him Saira we are very happy to have you with us a brief introduction about brother rishi said he was blessed to join sri satyasai vidya vihar ut in class 3 in the year 1978 later with immense grace of bhagwan joined class 6 at sri satyasai higher secondary school did his bcom honors and mba from sri satyasai institute of higher learning prashanti nigayam presently he is the managing director at hpl electric and power limited and also has been appointed as member secretary at sri satyasai international center new delhi saira we would now request you to share your experiences with all of us over to you om shri sai ram my humble pranams at the lotus feet of bhagwan shri sat sai ram whom we all fondly and reverently call swam i am very thankful to the organizers for giving me this wonderful opportunity to share my experience of my journey with sai my journey with sai has been a true acknowledgement of what swami has been often saying my life is my message after seeing him for very close quarters and over 42 years i can easily confirm and vouch that his life is his message my journey with sai has been a true acknowledgement of what swami has been saying that my life is my message i have seen him with very close quarters and for last 42 years and i can vouch and confirm that yes his life has been his message Bhagwan in one of the vainis had said that when the sun rises and shines not all lotus buds in the ponds and the lake rises only those who are ready to rise and shine bloom for the rest they have to bide their time but all are destined to bloom Therefore, our family was chosen by him to bloom towards him in the year 1971. My mother used to attend regular bhajans, which were held in one of the houses in Sundarnagar, New Delhi. She used to 
go on a monthly basis and attend a bhajan to and started to understand and know what Bhagwan Sri Satya Sai Baba was. From the bhajan, one one day she brought a photograph of Swami, and that was the first time in the year 1971 Swami entered our home. That photograph which she brought was fixed on the wall and that is it. In the year 1971 November, my father started to have a lot of pain in his throat. He did consult a lot of doctors and they said that it was a growth in the vocal cord region of the throat. Senior doctors suggested to him to conduct a biopsy to verify whether this growth was malignant or not. My father went one day went to that photograph which was there on the wall and he said, Swami, if you are God, then ensure please that this growth is not malignant and see to it that it is cured. So, as the date for the biopsy was fixed, the doctors did took the biopsy and uh, the samples were sent for verification. And lo and behold, the malignancy was not there in the growth. My parents had a sigh of relief and at that point of time, they started to accept that their prayer at that point of time to Bhagwan had some impact and there was no malignancy in the growth. In the year 1972, the month of March, Bhagwan had come to Delhi. He was staying at Golfings which is very close to our place of residence in New Delhi. So, my mother was a volunteer in the Seva Dal at that time and she was doing her duties. My father went for darshan of Bhagwan and during the darshan he realized that the devotees and the people there are carrying a photograph and are showing the scene to Swami and He is blessing them. He is blessing the photograph. So, my father immediately got up from the darshan and came quickly to our home and took my photograph, being the elder son, and went back to uh, the darshan golflings and he sat in the line awaiting the arrival of Swami. As Swami came in his usual self, he gave darshan to all the uh, ladies and gents present there. And as he passed my father, he went ahead, stopped, turned back, went to him and saw that photograph with my photo on it and he blessed him and smiled. That smile which he received from Baba changed his awareness of him and he started to like him. He started to want to know more about him. And so therefore that was a transition phase in our family's relationship with Bhagavan. So, I can recollect at this point of time what Swami has been saying many many times that if you take one step towards me, I shall take a hundred steps towards you. If you shed one tear, I shall wipe a hundred tears out of your eyes. And so therefore, in our case, when my parents took the first step to knowing Him, Bhagwan responded and took multiple steps towards us. So, my parents 
there are, after this visit of Bhagwan started to read about him, started to read Man of Miracles and started to find out what Bhagwan was actually was. Then after a few months, my parents went and went to Puddhapati Prashanti Nilayam and to seek darshans of Bhagwan. As they were there, they were lucky enough to get their interview from Bhagwan. And it was a general practice that Swami would materialize Vibhuti on seating immediately after the interview starts and give it to the people and devotees present in that room. So when Swami created Vibhuti and He was giving it to one person, second person, third person, fourth person and then fifth person. And by the time my father's turn came, he took his hand and rubbed it in his throat area and did it multiple times. So my father was alarmed because he had prayed for this in front of a photo of Bhagwan. And here uh, Bhagwan was, who was actually understood the fact that my father went through a throat problem and he took the hand and rubbed it with a lot of lovingness on his throat. So my father's knowledge of Sai started to turn into belief in the world. So if you see as a family we have evolved from knowing about him to believing in him, to developing a trust in him, developing a faith in him and thereafter towards the end he becomes the head of our family in all the decision making. So with this particular enlightenment and with this particular happiness that Swami had uh, answered his particular prayer while he prayed to him in, in his home, my father felt very happy. Then there were a lot of experiences which he had from 1972 onwards till this date but I will take you through one or two instances. In the year July 1978, my uncle Sri Rajesh Khandari had told my father that Satya Sai Baba, Bhagwan Satya Sai Baba was opening a school at Uti, Uttakamani and he had brought in three forms, one for his son and two for me and my brother Gautam. But at that time my mother was very insistent on not sending us to the school at Uti because she did not want to leave us at that tender age and see a we go to Uti. So my father did try to explain to her that this is a golden opportunity for the kids to learn a lot of values and to take that education which we could not find in Delhi. But my mother was pretty much insistent and she said that only and only if Swami were to physically tell her to put the children at Uti, only at that time she will do, otherwise she will not venture out to send us to a boarding school at Uti. So that was another dilemma because my father explained to her that we as devotees were neither a VIPs, neither part of the organization and we were sitting in ordinary darshan lines. So it is extremely difficult for Swami to come recognize and speak about this particular topic wherein the access to him was very very limited. But she said nothing will. If Swami tells me, we will do it. If he does not say, we will not do it. And so therefore, uh, they both of them went to Bhakti, sat in the lines for Darshan. 
At that time, it was not the current setting which is there today. Uh, it was a sand. The darshans were, uh, you had to sit in the sand and Swami would come from his the mandir and move as a one round of the darshans. At that time when they were at Parthi, luckily Mrs. Varma who was the principal, designated principal at that time, was staying just one floor below us in W1. So they went to her and asked her if there is seats available for any admission. To which the Mrs. Varma replied that there are no more vacancies. But my parents put a lot of hope in the way and they went for darshans regularly. So one day Swami came to him and said, Uti mein school mein admission chahiye? So my father said yes. Then he said, son ko admission diya. Uti school mein son ko admission diya. And he moved away. My father said, Swami, I have two children, not one. But he did not listen to that. And he moved ahead towards the lady's side. Because he started the uh, darshans from the gent side. So when he went towards the lady's side, he went to my mother and said, Dono, dono sons ko admission diya uti. That I have given admissions to both your sons in uti. So that elated my mother, my father and the love for Swami was drawn in and we were on way to uti. So this again reminds me of what Swami has been often saying that distance is no bar for Swami's love as equivalent to that the lotus blooms whenever the sun pips through the horizon. So distance is never a bar in getting Swami's love. So whether you are close to him, sitting next to him, or you are far away from him, or not within the vicinity of his sight, the Swami's grace will always flow. I have seen that in while studying there, that most many of the students and their families have come close from the world over to him on such such experiences. So finally, uh, there was another big story of how we went there and how we took the admission, but I am not taking that here right now. So finally we entered the portals of the Sai education system by admitting, getting admitted in the month of August 1978 in my third standard at Sri Satya Sai Vidya Vihar, Uta Kamant. The principal, Mrs. Varma, was fondly called mother by all of us, was very uh, loving. She took a lot of care for us and designed the whole routine which encourages a lot of uh, positivity into the school and its curriculum. The warden, where most of you will be knowing, Mrs. Prem Mahal, made uh, the whole life at the hostel extremely comfortable. The teachers, uh, where many of you would be knowing, Mrs. Uh, Munni Aunty, and then all other teachers, did ensure that we were part of one family staying at Uti school. So, uh, the dormitory consisted of a bunk bed. So bunk bed is one bed below and one on top. And then we had one shelf next to the beds. And so that was the life we were staying. We had a uh, closet room which was handled by the warden auntie, which had our suitcases and our extra clothes there. And so therefore, all in all, it was like staying 
in a family with your elders as a principal and the teachers being there as the sisters. Swami, when he would visit Uti, he had a wonderful routine. He would come and check on all of us when we were sleeping because the dormitory had a curtain which separated uh, the corridor and the dormitory room and the curtain was closed in the night. So Swami would come, open the curtain, walk through the end till the beds were over. He would see each and every student whether they are sleeping properly, are they covered, not covered. Many times he would put the mattress, uh, he would put the quilts on the, ch on the child to ensure that they are fully clad while sleeping. This environment was also great because on top we had Swami's room, on down we had our own room, the dormitory. We had a prayer hall, next to that was the classrooms, then we had a dining room. So it was one small unit and we were like a family there. I can recollect one incident wherein uh, in my third standard that, uh, that one of the students who wanted to go to the washroom ex got himself excused from the class, went to the washroom and then on their return they knocked and said to the, uh, to the teacher, may I come in? And the teacher said yes. And while she was uh, doing the scribbling on the blackboard, Swami came in from back and said, May I come in? And the teacher said yes. And so Swami came and sat in one of the benches. It is only later on when all of us turned back and the teacher also turned back, suddenly they realized that actually it was Swami who was saying may I come in. So there were such beautiful moments, morning to evening, which we had with Bhagwan there during his visit to Uti. The, the, the teaching, the routine was all spaced out. So right from our breakfast, we had um, two game sessions during the day. After the breakfast, we were in for playing. Then we had our classes. Then we had lunch. Again followed by a game session. Then again classes. We had evening tea. And then we had one hour of playing. So the routine was very much packed and the routine was very comfortable and so we all had been enjoying our time there. The bond between the teachers, the principal and the students is so, so strong that even after 40 years, all the teachers, whenever I meet them, they know not only my name, they also know my roll number. And so this batch of ours, the first batch there, had one of the excellent times and excellent uh, conditions to be there at Putin. So, as we all know that Bhagwan is not only our father and mother, he is also our guru. So being a guru, he puts us through not only good times and the loving times, he also chisels us. He also puts us through a grind. And so, when we had learnt that the Uti school will shut down after 5th standard and there will be no more 6th class in Uti. We were all terrified. So all of us from Delhi, and you would be knowing many of them, uh, we had uh, Vinesh Sahani, who was the son of Mr. Y.P. Sahani. We had uh, uh, Sharan Khanna, who was the son of uh, Mr. I.P. Khanna. Bharadwaj, Rishi Bharadwaj. Partish, Dubey, Ajit Perivar and many of us. So all of us were frightened as to what would happen. But Swami luckily opened up the doors for Ishwarambha High School at Prashanti Delhi, which was a Telugu medium, but an English medium wing was created because both primary school and higher secondary schools buildings were under construction at Prashanti Delhi. So, therefore, we all went into the school 
we all came to Prashanti Nilayam and now we were part of the main hostel. The main hostel and the campus at Prashanti Nilayam was totally different from what it was in Uti. Uti was a well designed, comfortable schooling pattern, while the stay at the hostel at Prashanti Nilayam was extremely complicated. It was less structured and we had to fend for ourselves because there were a lot of students in the particular hostel and the campus was large. The paying, uh, to pay too much of attention to the student was not possible. So, as it is said that being a guru, he knew exactly where he is taking us. So, we had in the Uti, we had, we are trying to know Bhagavan. And in Prashanti Nilayam, we try to get to know him much more better. So that was the positive side of where he was putting us to the grind. Here we could study him more, we could have a better insight into what Bhagavan was, what his daily routine was, what his uh, message was, what his life is. What example was he setting for all of us, including the devotees? What were his values? What was philosophy was? So we grew more informative about him and we started to get into the section of belief. So as children, we were trying, we were getting into believing him. But the life at Prashanti Nilayam was not easy. Uti was much more comfortable. The life in Prashanti Nilayam was more strenuous. In the peak of the heat, we never had any fans. We never had any chapels. We never had any slippers. There, there were no uh, proper uh, facility. The food was typical South Indian food. And so therefore, uh, it was taking more time to adjust to us physically. On the other hand, we had much more access to Bhagavan. We had much more understanding of what he was. And so therefore, the time was uh, good and we were slowly starting to know and get belief into him. Swami had been saying that the life that you lead will slowly take you towards betterment of time. So, when you start knowing him, sometimes you get into a mode of arrogancy. So, once I do recollect that we were all sitting together and we used to discuss, oh, it is very easy to give a letter to Bhagwan. So, and there is no issue, just go into the line and from students he generally takes the letter. So, once or twice, I did make that attempt, but he had never taken the letters. So, knowing him and getting the belief comes to the next round of tests and exams. So, he, Bhagwan, does want to test you for your faith, for your belief in him. He had often been saying that it is only when you hammer a nail in the wall, you always shake the nail to test and check whether the how deep rooted has the fitting gone into and how firmly it is stuck to the wall. So similarly Swami tests his devotees time and again to see whether their faith lasts the test of time or does it vanish through a stringent test. I can recollect that one incident that Swami stopped talking to our entire family for years making us shed all our egos. After my ninth standard, we decided to go on an overseas vacation during our holidays. So, uh, the vacation after our summer holidays, 
when we came home, we all decided to go for a vacation overseas. Notwithstanding the fact that Swami has been always advocating and giving a lot of speeches and discourses, stating that how you must conduct yourself when you are at home and how you must conduct when you are back in society. And taking a vaca overseas vacation was certainly not one of them. So when we came back and joined after the vacation, when we came back to the school, Swami called my parents and first for interview and he was taking, started to blast us, saying that a lot of people from overseas devotees world over are coming for Swami's darshan and then there are some families who are going overseas for holidays and believe me after that for many many years he had not even spoken to us he did not talk to uh, my family and me and my brother so he wants that you should build the faith in him but he also wants to test the patience he also wants to test the strength of your belief and faith. So under these uh, circumstances, we had uh, also seen that what Baba had been telling us before, that the minimum qualification for Swami's grace is surrender of ego. When the ego goes away, we become much more closer to what we are to him. So it raises certain doubts and some questions as to what the journey with Sai that is it a fact that many times he does not even speak to you. You are sitting in Darshan's for years but he may not talk to you. For whose benefit it is? For whose who is stand to gain out of this? So the answer is purely on the front that it is for our own benefit that he did not talk to us so that we can get rid of many many vices which and make our thoughts and actions much more pure. He had often said and I do recollect one, one uh, quote of Bhagavan wherein he said that when a magnet does not attract a needle the fault lies in the dirt that covers the needle. So Bhagavan is always pure, his intentions are always pure, but the dirt in our needle needs to be removed so that we can again get back attracted to him. So after I can uh, relate another small incident which changed my course of life. After having finished my BCom degree at the Sri Satyasai Institute of Higher Learning and I was pretty much frustrated being there and I felt that enough is enough and I need to go back to Delhi and pursue my education in some overseas university and uh, I did not want to take I did not want to take no for an answer from my parents, so I pressed them that I would like to do my MBA in an overseas university and not pursue it in the Sri Satya Science Institute. So after studying there for 13 years, I felt dejected because Swami was also not talking and I thought that it is better to come back to and study overseas and take an MBA degree. There is another catch to this MBA story in my case because when I was very very small Swami had told me that you will do MBA in my university and at that time there was not even a school there and he had told my brother that you will do CA and it was unimaginable at that point of time that we would be doing exactly those things which Swami had been telling us. But that is another uh, episode. So after uh, my MBA, I came to Delhi and I was starting to fill the forms for my overseas education. So once 
After dinner, we all had to, we had gone to Nerula's at Sikkana place at that time for an ice cream. And at that time, I told my father that if only Swami was to physically and personally tell me, then yes, I would consider and I should, I would consider doing my MBA there. To which was another uh, challenge because the it was already the vacation were going on, the course was already over, the forms were already due to have been submitted. Baba was at Kode Canal and uh, it is a general rule that only if you are invited there or if you are a guest there, you get, go to Kode Canal for persons. So we found it extremely difficult, but my father took the initiative. We went to the Sabdarjan airport and bought the Indian Airlines ticket to Madurai and from there we drove up to Kode Canal the same day. So we reached Sai Shruti, the residence of Bhagwan at Kode Canal. And in the Sai Shruti, those of you who have seen it, it's a long driveway towards the gate from where Swami would be giving his Arti, post Arti Darshan. And there were thousands of people, and when we reached Sai Shruti, the Arti was just over. And we were at the gate, the last persons at the gate. And there we could see, and Swami was not talking to us, and so there we could see Swami's double hand blessings. And we and my father told me at that time, I think Swami has seen me. And uh, I, I didn't believe it because uh, there were thousands of people and you know, Swami was looking towards all the devotees in that same direction. But to have seen us was pretty impossible because we were at far end of the drive. So next day morning, we reached the Sai Shruti for Darshans. And that time, uh, Sri Ved Prakash Ji had uh, said, hey, when did you come? He told my father. So my father said, I came yesterday evening. He said, okay, Swami was asking inside that where is Lalit staying? So, uh, so I told him, I do not know where he is staying. I do not even know if he is here. So we felt good. We felt that yes, at least Swami acknowledged our presence. And uh, the next day when we were in for darshans, uh, Swami came for darshans and he uh, uh, finished his normal darshan and he went back. And then after that he went for a drive around Kode Canal with the students that he had taken, who had, who had come with him as part of the delegation. So we waited at Sai Shruti. It was a very difficult wait because we are not allowed to wait and we were hiding behind trees to see that we don't we are not sent out of the compound. And when Swami came back at one o'clock in the afternoon, suddenly he saw us and he called us and uh, he uh, told us, "Okay, you come for lunch the next day and come and have lunch." And he told me that you join the boys who were staying there, you join them and both me and my father were invited for lunch the next day. So that incident again changed the vision because uh, the, his love naturally attracts. But as said again, if you, why, if you shed a tear, Bhagwan would wipe hundred tears out of your eyes. So that those words of Bhagwan were being felt and were true. Even the fact that there were there are many instances wherein we may not survive the test of faith as put forward by him. So then after that uh, we went back, we had a good seven, eight days there and then Baba directed us to go to Prashantinelli and fill the form and appear for the entrance test. And so therefore, uh, the, the education which I did not want 
to do and I wanted to do it overseas was currently stalled by him and I was made again to back to MBA with a lot of love and with a lot of wisdom dawning upon me as to how I should lead my life here on. All I can say is that being with him, being with Swami, being with Bhagwan for over 40 years, there are most lessons which we learn. But certainly for every small instance of his, which he may have talked to any person, his every word which uttered out of him, which may have been for any person, all applies to us. It is immaterial whether he has spoken to us directly or not directly. Or it is immaterial whether he has addressed the gathering to us directly or not. But his every word did mean a lot of things for the world, for the humanity and for all the lives and time to come. So therefore, if I can uh, say it on, on a summary basis, what Swami has been telling us, which is, as, as I told you, a conviction which I believe is fully true after spending my time with Him. Which He says so, that Satya is what I teach. Dharma is the way I live. Shanti is the mark of my personality. And Prema is my very nature. So I can say that with my journey to with, so, with Sai, that all of this is fully true and once again I would uh, like to thank the organizers for giving me this wonderful opportunity and sign up Om Shri Sai Ram My humble pranams at Bhagwan's lotus feet Thank you brother for a wonderful and mesmerizing talk filled with lots of experiences and lessons for all of us. You have given us such valuable insights on Bhagwan's teachings. We need to tune ourselves with Swami's teachings and surrender ourselves at His Divine Lotus Feet. Swami knows what is best for us. We need to make constant effort to make Swami a part of our life. Chanting His name is the only way to merge with Him. He guides us like a compassionate mother. What you have shared with us today is very precious. Your words have touched us very deep. We are in total bliss, full of positive vibrations. I again take this opportunity to thank you, brother, for sharing your experiences and valuable teachings with us. And we hope to live as per the values of Swami. We thank Bhagwan for gifting us with such a wonderful talk today. Now, we shall conclude by Mangal Aarti. Sairam Om Jai Jagadi Jagadi Swami Satya Sai Hari
Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Samastha loka, Sukhino bhavantu. Samastha loka, Sukhino bhavantu. Samastha loka. Jai Bolo Bhagwan Shri Satya Sai Baba